Wonderful. So thanks everybody for joining this session. So during this um, during this part of my session, I'm going to describe about the various MySQL availability solution and how um, those can be actually deployed at scale. So a bit about myself. Uh, so I'm Rene Cano. Uh, I have my background is as a MySQL DBA for quite a long time, almost two decades. Uh, so, and um, I am now the CEO of Proxy SQL and the author of the product itself. So my background has been always as uh, MySQL DBA and uh, I develop product for it. And Proxy SQL is currently the most uh, known product. Uh, a little bit about Proxy SQL itself as a company. So we provide support uh, and um, for for customers both for on-premises and on-cloud infrastructure. And um, so we provide consultancy and also training and custom development is required. So it also means that uh, we provide the development for feature requests and, and other. Uh, the company using Proxy SQL, we actually have uh, several companies using Proxy SQL. Uh, there are way more large companies using it, but of course, as you can assume, uh, there is a lot of NDA going on. So, and for legal reason, most a lot of companies using it uh, do not like to be uh, disclosed that they are using the product itself, just for legal legal reasons. So, quick uh, quick introduction: what what is proxy SQL? Basically, is a layer seven database proxy. Uh, that's a very important to distinguish to make because uh, one of the most common uh, proxy known is HC proxy, and pretty everybody is familiar with it. And the issue with HA proxy is that it is a layer four proxy. Uh, the fact so basically what is happening is that it, it transports packet at at the layer four, so at TCP level, so it just connects the application with the database. While Proxy SQL performs a completely different approach, it's a layer seven proxy. This means that for the application point of view, the database, the server, is Proxy SQL. And so there is a communication between the application and Proxy SQL. Proxy SQL will receive the request from the application and it will perform a series of logic and um, will determine what to do with the, with this query. And to be a variety of things, like rewriting the query, throttling, um, caching it, and deciding on which server to send it, and, um, and, and other features, like retrying if the, the backend, the, executing the query to the backend fails, and so on. Uh, to be able to do this, it needs to understand the protocol. So it is MySQL protocol aware. So it knows which are the boundaries of the query. And when it comes to results that is able to identify which are the column definition, the result set, and, and so on. Currently, uh, the protocol we support are MySQL and ClickHouse. There are feature plans for introducing more backend, uh, but currently those are the two that we focus on. Proxy SQL is highly available, and, and of course, we focus a lot on performance. It has a lot of features, so it's extremely feature rich, but of course, during this, uh, during this session, we're not going to list all of them, and we only focus to the ones that are relevant uh, to uh, the deployment of MySQL in HA solution and at scale. So a quick architecture overview of how Proxy SQL operates, as I was mentioning before, is a layer server proxy. So this means that the client connects Proxy SQL itself. The client does not connect to the database server um, through the proxy, but Proxy SQL itself is the backend of the client. And so the client executes requests. Those requests are evaluated, some logic is applied, and then actions are performed. So Proxy SQL is the one that determines where the requests need to be executed and what other transformation need to be performed. <clears throat> so there are several design uh, goals that have been uh, that are 
key features of the development of proxy sql and of course related to this session what we care mostly is about mysql in nha solution and uh, to be able to do this uh, we also need to basically what we need to focus is on the maximum uptime because if we have um, an architecture that is highly available of course uptime becomes one of the key factors and of course what we want is to be able to scale as much as possible uh, so scalability is one of our focus this means that for instance behind the one single proxy sql instance you don't have to have just one MySQL cluster but you can have a variety of clusters uh, literally thousands of clusters and um, we're going to describe some of them later on so um, in the context of this session of course we are going to describe what are uh, the high ability features of sql and how it behaves uh, during planned and unplanned failover in an asynchronous mysql replication and then still in regards to HA solution, we're going to discuss about how Proxy SQL support Galera and Percon Extra Cluster and uh, its native support for Oracle Group Replication. And then recently, well, almost one year ago, we also introduced um, integration for um, RDS, Amazon RDS, and Aurora. And then we are going to describe how ProSQL performs the load balancing. And uh, then later on, we are also going to discuss how uh, ProSQL is able to scale. So how many users is able to, to handle, how many schemas, how many servers, how many connections. So we are going to briefly describe um, how to operate at scale. Now, asynchronous replication and failover. Um, so MySQL replication, asynchronous replication, is historically uh, the, the first replication topology that MySQL supported, and up today it's still one of the most commonly used. So when where you have one writer and a series of reader, or you can have other names like master and slaves, primary and secondary server, and basically the writer is the one that gets all the write, and those writes are replicated to all the other server. And uh, this topology can be uh, complex, like because you can have also cascading, so you can have intermediary uh, servers, so you create a chain of replication. So uh, why is important this um, this topology when it comes to high ability? Well, any server can fail at any time, and if the server failing is one of the replica, that's not of a big deal because often the application will just start throwing error but eventually uh, we'll be able to connect it to a different replica but if the primary server the one that is taking the write is the one failing of course this will have a lot of repetition on the application that now suddenly have not has lost the server where it was sending write and uh, of course, this historically create creates a lot of problem with the application and uh, there have been cases where it was actually quite common that even for plan failover, in which you wanted to shut down the primary server and perform a failover to one of the replicas, that it would then become the primary one. Um, it was a very a difficult operation in which more often than not, the application needed to be shut down while the performance, while the failover was being performed and then the application needs to be set over. So this goes downtime and it, it is absolutely not a highly available solution. So our focus in Proxy SQL in this sort of scenarios in which we are using um, MySQL standard asynchronous replication is to reduce uh, the, the period in which the database becomes unavailable during the failover and this is no matter if the failover is graceful or not. So basically this means that if you are intentionally performing a switchover, so promoting one of the replica to become the, the writer while the current writer is being dismissed or demoted, or um, if just we have 
uh, a downtime because the primary server went down and uh, now the application didn't know what to write. So with Proxy SQL, we developed this, this algorithm in which basically what happened is that Proxy SQL itself is the one able to detect any sort of failover and um, it basically tries to reduce as much as possible the errors that are uh, escaped the application. So the idea is that as long as the application is able to communicate with Proxy SQL and it keep the established connection between the application and Proxy SQL, the application won't ever know that a failover happened. And in fact, to be more precisely, the application should not know anything about the replication topology. So the application should never know which one is the writer and which are the replica. All the application needs to know is how to connect to Proxy SQL and uh, which Proxy SQL, this is a different topic, but one of the most common um, architecture is to actually deploy Proxy SQL together with the application. So normally the application communicate through 127.0.0.1, so through localhost. So there is no need for uh, build HA between the application and Proxy SQL if the proxy is uh, bundled together with the application. If this is not the case, so you have Proxy SQL in a middle layer, then you have different other different type of solutions that are available as well. <clears throat> and uh, so again, in this sort of in this sort of topology, if uh, a failover happens, the application should not ever notice that uh, a failover happened because the connection from the application to its own server, that in this case is proxy SQL, are never uh, closed. So from an application point of view, nothing happened. And uh, now a few slides to briefly describe uh, what I just described here. So if in a normal scenario, failover scenario, in which you are not using Proxy SQL, the application needs to know which one is the master and which are the various slaves. So if for whatever reason the master dies um, or is being demoted, but let's assume it dies, this is the most, um, one of the most common scenarios. Now the application does not know to which server it needs to, to write and uh, actually it doesn't know which one is the, is the new master. Of course, there are various solutions uh, that can be implemented also without Proxy SQL. So you can have some service discovery um, deployed in your infrastructure. In this case, the application will need to be reconfigured. So the application at the point will know which one is the new master, so which to which server send uh, traffic. Of course, uh, this takes time because uh, the service discovery needs to detect that um, there, there, was a, there was a change and it needs to notify the application. And many applications, uh, when they get a new configuration, what they normally do is to, to apply this configuration, they need to be restarted. So either way, this creates an extensive downtime. Uh, with Proxy SQL instead, the the failover is completely different because what happened is that the application will always communicate with, with uh, a Proxy SQL instance, that is either local or ultimate layer. And Proxy SQL will automatically send the traffic to either the master or the slaves. The application, again, doesn't need to know which one is the master. The application does not need to care at all. The application needs to know nothing about the MySQL topology. And what happens if the master, for whatever reason, dies? Well, if you have, um, if you have a replication uh, manager like Orchestrator or MHA or similar, uh, this replicator manager will promote one of the slaves to become the new master. It will perform the um, slaving, and then it will set read only equal zero to the new master. And Proxy SQL will automatically detect this. So as soon as the server, as one of the server has read only equal zero, Proxy SQL will know which one is the new, uh, the the new master, and will start sending write to it. Now, there is also a series of interesting features related to uh, failover and HA here. Like for example, 
if uh, uh, it takes some time to perform the failover, I mean, some time is just uh, a fraction of a second, but sometimes the failover inset takes a few seconds, even five, 10 seconds. Proxy SQL is able to hold the application request. So even in this case, when there is no master, for a certain period of time, normally uh, 10 seconds by default, the application, instead of getting errors that Proxy SQL has nowhere to send the query, instead the application, what the application will notice is a delay because Proxy SQL is able to hold the request and then execute the request as soon as the new master is promoted. Um, some important note, as I was mentioning before, Proxy SQL is not, is not the one responsible for performing um, all the, the of performing the failover itself, so it does not perform the failover and does not perform the slaving either, but is able to detect it. And so this means this has several implications. For instance, that you can have a quite complex network with a lot of proxies, like you can have hundreds or even thousands of proxies, and uh, you don't need to have one of them. Uh, responsible for performing the failover because the failover is performed by a different agent like MHA or orchestrator. But if you have hundreds or thousands of proxy SQL instances running in your cluster, they will all be able to detect that a failover happened. So they will all independently be able to identify which one is the new writer. If instead you are not using MySQL asynchronous replication, uh, you can have you can use different uh, replication replication uh, solution like Galera or group replication, and we are going to describe them shortly. So um, I don't know how many of you are familiar with uh, Galera or uh, group replication, but probably many of you uh, already are. For who is not familiar with it, I will just make a very short introduction uh, for both technology. So Galera Cluster is a replication, um, is an application topology that allow multi-master active, active clusters solution. So this means that in theory, you can write to any server at the same time and it will perform conflict resolution on its own. It performs synchronous replication based on certificate so this means that you don't have servers lagging behind the sort of is eventually consistent and so on, but they will actually all be um, replicating at the same time and the replication will be synchronous between all the various nodes. It has some interesting performance uh, enhancement, like it supports multi-thread replication. Uh, historically, MySQL asynchronous replication only had single thread replication, um, but recently, uh, MySQL, also MySQL asynchronous replication has multi-thread replication. Uh, Galera is NODB compliant, so again, because it is not operate at storage engine layer, but it operates at replication layer, so, uh, but is required in ODB, so this also means it is ACID compliant. And um, the way it is architectured, it, it makes it suitable for both LAN a network, but also one network and the cloud solution. And the, the way that servers are provisioned in the cluster is through SSD, that is full state transfer. So if a new server comes online, it gets the whole data set from one of the available nodes. Or if a server has been off from the cluster for a short period of time and then it joins the cluster again, uh, what you have inside is an ISD that is an incremental state transfer. So only the last changes that have been applied to the cluster will also be applied to the new joining server. Uh, now we have group replication, very similar. Uh, it is multi-master active-active. So in theory, you are able to write on any of the server. Now, while Galera, uh, by default, it operates in a multi, by default, it operates in a multi writer mode. So technically, you can write to any server at the same time. Group replication, instead, by default, it use a single single writer by default. Also, but 
again, also group replication, also group replication, you can write to any server at the same time. The approach of having only one writer is the, is the recommended approach also for Galera. So even if Galera itself advertised that you can write anywhere, still the best approach is to only use one server uh, for writes, this to avoid a series of conflict resolution that Galera itself handle it. But you know, uh, instead of having conflict resolution, it's better to not have conflict at all. Uh, also, group replication supports the multi thread replication and is NDB compliant. And um, because of how it is designed, it is suitable mostly for local area networks and for networks that have very low latency. It doesn't perform so very well on one. So, uh, on network that has high latency, group replication does not behave very well. And state transfer is based on GAD matching. So basically, uh, servers are able to exchange transactions. So this is what they are um, passing from one node to the other one. <coughs> so. OK, so how proxy sequence integrate with Galera? Uh, historically, support for Galera was introduced in proxy SQL 1.3. Uh, uh, this was done through an external script. So uh, to be more specific, SQL has the ability of executing a script at a regular interval, and we'll show you some examples shortly. And uh, so this was this script that was responsible for managing and detecting changes in the Galera cluster, so to provide the HA and the integration with SQL. Instead, in SQL 2.0, we do not recommend anymore to support this external script but instead we have um, native support for Galera. So this means that now is the core of SQL monitoring that is able to monitor the various servers in a Galera cluster and determine the status of those servers and which one is the writer, which one is the server that is designed for sending reads, which one is healthy and unhealthy and so on. So uh, I was mentioning uh, this external script. This external script is, was executed through uh, what in SQL is called a scheduler. So a scheduler is, is a feature in SQL that is very similar to how crones operate. So it is able to execute a script at regular interval. The interval is defined in milliseconds. In this example, uh, the interval in millisecond is 10,000. So this means that every 10 seconds the script was being executed. And every script you could have passed a series of arguments. Uh, in this case, the argument was uh, the port, sorry, the IP and the port of the admin itself. And this was used to connect to, to the admin and to get the information about all the servers. So being able to uh, execute monitoring on those servers and then reconfigure the cluster if required. And then as part of the argument, it was also passed um, a log file where the script could write um, the operation it was performing. Um, just a quick example of how this was operating. So this is an extract from, from the log. I'm not going to spend much time on it because this is sort of outdated because in 2.0 we have native support. Nevertheless, we still have a lot of users using the proxy SQL 1.4, so I'm writing this one for reference. So uh, in proxy SQL, we have a lot of tables that this is actually the way you configure the proxy SQL itself. So you have an admin interface that you can use to connect using a MySQL client, and all the configuration is stored in tables. So this is how it looks at tables in case uh, uh, we have two servers that are online and one server is that is offline. Um, so before I was mentioning that uh, um, SQL is able to detect if there was a failover in uh, asynchronous replication. This was done and the configuration there is done through a table called the MySQL replication host group. And in SQL to zero, the concept of the algorithm behind the MySQL replication host group was extended to also support Galera. So uh, basically in the Galera tables that we're going to show uh, shortly, 
not only we define which one is the reader host group and which one is the writer host group, but we also define how many writers we want, like uh, the maximum number of writers that recommended is one. And then we also define if the writer is also a reader. Uh, if the setting is zero, uh, the writer won't take any reads, won't be part of the reader host group. And we also define uh, what max transaction behind. We're going a bit more into details later on. And uh, because proxy SQL is able to, attack, to determine which how many servers are writable, and if you have, uh, for example, three servers that are writable, but you have configured max writer to be one, uh, so the other two servers will be put in a separate host group called the backup writer host group. So those servers are servers that are potentially writers, but they are not being used as a writer because max writers is set to, to one. And then you have also host group called the offline host group. There are put all the servers that for whatever reason do not look healthy. So here you can see which are the tables that are relevant for Galera. There is the MySQL Galera host groups, the runtime MySQL Galera host group. The second table, the runtime one, is nothing more than the runtime representation of the configuration. So in other words, what means is that MySQL Galera host group is where you configure the various Galera cluster. And once you configure them and you load them to runtime, you are able to check in the table called runtime MySQL Galera host group, which is the current configuration that is loaded to runtime. And then we also have a table that is responsible for logging the various uh, status of the clusters or every node of the cluster that is called MySQL server Galera log. Now let's have a quick look of how the configuration itself is done. So this is the table responsible for configuring Galera uh, clusters. So now we have the various host group, the writer host group, the backup writer host group, the reader host group, the offline host group. And then we have a few more fields that are uh, important, like active. Um, for example, you can decide to have uh, a, a Galera host group configured here, but not being active. Uh, for example, you want to have uh, uh, a Galera uh, cluster that is on a different DC and you don't want to enable it on the proxy on a, another DC. So you just configure the cluster there, but you do not you configure it as not active. And then you have max writers, as I was mentioning before, is how many writers uh, you want to be, uh, how many nodes you want to be writers in this uh, in this cluster. And then you also have this writer is also reader that define if the writers have, should also take reads or not. And max transaction behind. I'll, I'm going to go uh, in details about max transaction behind later on after describing uh, group replication. So I will be able to make a comparison between the two. Okay, here there is a detailed explanation of what I already mentioned. I'm going to skip this slide. Same here. I basically described it. And here is written for reference when you're going to uh, watch this recording. Uh, beside the configuration table, we also have a series of uh, global variables that are related to Galera. Specifically, we have three um, variables. That is the MySQL monitor Galera health check interval. So this variable is defined in um, how often MySQL is going to check the health of the various nodes of the cluster. In this example, is every 5,000 milliseconds. So every five seconds is checking the status of all the, class, of all the nodes. The timeout because um, sometimes queries against a backend fails, especially if the backend is unhealthy, and this is the whole point of the health check. So the health check itself has a timeout. So if the server, for whatever reason, is not able to reply within 800 milliseconds, proxy will consider this server unhealthy. Now, uh, there have been cases in which it is possible that one of the database is overloaded, 
and th this is the reason why the server is actually not replying to, to a request. Or uh, you might have a temporary network, uh, network issue, so the request is just being very slow, um, but eventually after, um, after a few seconds of replying, it will become back to normal because it was just a temporary network issue. So instead of uh, uh, well, instead of considering unhealthy a server that where a check is timing out on the first time, we also have these variables called um, MySQL monitor clear health check max timeout count. So if the server does not respond in time to a health check for three times in this case, ProxySQL will consider the backend unhealthy and will perform the appropriate reconfiguration. Now, configuring Calera with ProxySQL 2.0. Um, so basically here, I'm showing an example of how to configure uh, a Calera cluster in ProxySQL. So for example, if we have a cluster where we want to define that the divider host group is two, the leader host group is three, the offline host group is one, the backup writer host group is four, a max number of writer is one, and then um, the host group, uh, this cluster is active, and the writer is not also reader, and max transaction behind is zero. All we have to do is run this insert statement, and basically we are configuring proxy SQL to manage this sort of cluster. Of course, in this configuration here, we have we are not describing absolutely at all which one are the server. So this is just configuring metadata about the cluster. And then we have to also configure uh, the server themselves. So let's assume that we have this cluster with three nodes. And so basically we are going to execute an insert statement into the MySQL server table, specifying the host group ID, host name and port, at minimum, and in this case also the weight. And then we basically specify that uh, those three servers are configured in two different host groups, in host group three. And uh, host group two is the writer host group, while host group three is the reader. Now, if you remember from the previous slide, we configured uh, max writer set to one. And in this case, we actually have two writers. So of course, this is a sort of incompatible configuration. So this configuration is, does not match what we have configured with, uh, with Carrera. So basically what happened is that we inserted um, the configuration this way, but after we load the configuration to runtime, uh, this is a, a something very important to remember. Uh, wh when you insert in those table, we are just configuring proxy SQL. The configuration does not take effect until you execute load MySQL server to runtime. And when you execute this, Proxy SQL will actually reconfigure the server and put only one of the server in host group two, that is the private host group. The reason only one server goes in host group two is because we defined max writer set to one. So in this case, we have the server ending in 113 being put in host group four, that is the backup uh, writer host group. So if server uh, ending in 112 for whatever reason fails, um, the server ending in 113 is the one being promoted to uh, becoming the new writer. Okay, now, um, as I was mentioning before, Fox SQL is perform a lot of monitoring check on those backend server, and uh, it also log in, in a table, in an internet table, the status of those server. Here, for example, we can see that uh, uh, this server 172.16.112, um, it, the check was successful in around 1.2 milliseconds. The server is in the primary partition, read only is equal to no, so the server is writable. And we also have a series of other metrics that Proxy SQL is checking for um, when a server is configured as part of Galera. Now, let's have the same. Um, a similar overview on how this works with InnoDB cluster. So InnoDB cluster uh, support was first introduced, yes, for group replication was first introduced in 1.3 using an external script like the scheduler with Galera. Uh, in 1.4, we implemented 
native support for group replication. And as I was mentioned before, there are some small differences between group replication and um, and Galera. And the main difference is what represent max transaction behind. So while in uh, Galera, max transaction behind in reality represents the number of uh, bright sets that has not been applied. In uh, group replication, max transaction behind, it actually defines the number of GDD events that uh, the server, um, the non-primary nodes could be falling behind before being excluded from the cluster. Uh, the reason why uh, it's called max transaction behind is that in group replication, those actually represent transaction. In Galera, they do not represent transaction, but we decided that, uh, to make um, a configuration simple between uh, uh, group replication and Galera to keep the same name. So even if in uh, group in Galera, they are not transaction, uh, but they are byte set, we kept the same name. And the one more important thing to note is that for group for support uh, for group application to work with proxy SQL, we also need a series of stored procedures uh, that are required. In this slide, where I will also show you uh, where to find these stored procedures. Okay, the key tables that are relevant to group application are MySQL group application host group, and it is very similar to the Galera one. And as I was mentioning before, the same principle applies with the runtime table. So you configure uh, in this table and then you load to runtime. And in the runtime table, you are able to identify which is the current configuration that Proxy SQL is using. And also, in a very similar to the Galera uh, log, we also have a table that is responsible for logging the status of the file server. So not after every check, this table is recording the status of those servers. Now, the configuration table of material group replication, very similar to what we were seeing about Carrera. So we have a provider host group, backup provider host group, a reader host group, offline host group, active if you want this configuration to be active or not, max number of writers. Then we have the setting that is that define if the writer is also part of the leader host group, max transaction behind, and of course, you can also have a comment uh, to define the cluster itself. <coughs> Here we have very, uh, in this slide, we are basically describing what are the difference between max transaction behind in group replication and in Galera. I was mentioning this before, so in, group replication is actually count the number of transactions. So if a server is lagging more than X number of transactions, possible we stop sending by to it. While instead in uh, in Carrera, those are uh, bright sets. So if a server is lagging certain number of bright sets behind uh, the server is actually taking the bytes, possible we stop using that server and we'll only send in read requests to servers that are more in sync even if they are more or less all in sync because group replication and Galera, they are synchronous uh, application. Now, um, before I was mentioning that Galera has three variables, three global variables. With group replication, we actually have four. Uh, so we have um, uh, two related to the head check interval and timeout. This is exactly the same as the Galera one. So one define how often the status of the server is, um, so the server is checked, if they are healthy or not, and what are the, the variables. So if they are read only, if they are resting right, and so on. The timeout, and also we have, as in Galera, the max timeout count. So if one server fails, uh, if I request timeout, the server is not considered immediately as faulty, but a certain threshold of requests need to fail before a server is considered faulty. Now, um, the nature of uh, group replication is slightly different when it comes to transaction behind, and group replication has the, the tendency of having servers that are slightly lagging, and for this reason, we also introduced these new global variables called max transaction behind count. 
So if a, if a service is lagging behind uh, during one check, instead of disabling the server immediately, ProxySQL can wait up to a certain number of checks to uh, be, be, to have max transaction behind beyond a certain threshold before actually considering the server, uh, before actually removing the server from, from the cluster. So basically stop sending reads to it. Okay, uh, as I was mentioning initially, uh, for group replication, for the check for group replication to work properly, we need a series of stored procedure that need to be installed in group replication. And those procedures, um, they actually function that are then utilized for, for a view that is, and the view is called GR member routing candidate status. Uh, the, all, the view and the bodies function uh, are available at the link that is there in, in this slide. Okay. Now, um, what does actually look like this table, the group routing, the GR member routing candidate status? Uh, looks something like this. So it's executing this query on uh, one of the primary, on, on the primary node, you will have uh, a metadata about the server itself. So if it is a viable candidate, if it is read only or not, how many transactions behind, and how many transactions need to be certified. And if you execute the same query on a different node, you have you might have a slightly different result. In this case, node two is set to read only equal yes. So this server cannot be used for write. So this means that the, all the write in this cluster are going to the MySQL node one. Okay, and uh, then finally, as a, also as for Calera, also in group application, we have a table that is responsible for storing all the status of the servers. So after every check, whatever is being retrieved from the server is logged in this table. So here we see that node one is read-only equal. No, it's a viable candidate, transaction behind zero. So basically it's the same of the output I was showing before. Um, so basically uh, in this slide, this is the query being executed on MySQL server. Proxy SQL takes those information, makes some decision on which one is the server that is healthy and which one is not healthy, which one is the writer and which one is not. And it also records this information in a log table. And again, those log tables are all internal to Proxy SQL. Now, AWS Aurora. Uh, this is another HA solution that is available. And um, I said, if you're familiar with, uh, with the BS Aurora, uh, it provides some endpoints, and you can actually use those endpoints for um, to create some sort of HA. Uh, so basically, you can have the application that is always writing to the writer um, endpoint, so it will write to uh, the writer server in Aurora, or the application can point to the reader endpoint and basically the request will be load balanced to the various replica in Aurora. Uh, still, this this is not a perfect solution and if in Aurora there is a failover or something like this, um, you normally have an extended period of downtime and uh, furthermore, you are losing all the connection between the application and the, the various backend. Um, because the backend itself is being terminated. While with Proxy SQL, the implementation is absolutely different and uh, in a similar way to how it was, uh, as I was showing before with the uh, Galera and group, and group application, the application will always connect to Proxy SQL, so the connection are not terminated when a failover happened on the backend. And ProxySQL will be the one responsible for detecting the failover and then forwarding the request to the right server. So um, the integration with uh, AWS Aurora is, um, from my implementation point of view, is quite different than um, the implementation we have for Galera and group replication. 
Uh, the reason why it's different is that uh, we are not checking every single server every time. Uh, that is the implementation of Galera and group replication. Instead, we uh, round robin uh, health check on all the various nodes of AWS Aurora, and we do not check just the status of the single node, but we are getting metrics and status from a table that. Aurora itself exposes. So we are able to query this table called replica host status. And from this, from this table, we are automatically able to identify which one is the writer and which one are the readers. And uh, not only that, we also have multiple, um, multiple features associated with this. For instance, we are able to detect a new replica are added to the cluster because this is actually quite common scenarios in which you can have some um, auto scaling in aurora so if the servers become overloaded and uh, you define that uh, you want to scale your cluster uh, your aurora cluster toxically is automatically able to determine this because in this table the replica host status the new replica will show up so toxically is able to automatically detect those new replica. Another important thing is that uh, while in MySQL asynchronous replication, we have a replication log that is measured in second, and with the group replication, and uh, in group replication, we have a replication log measured in uh, a transaction, and this is normally very small because we have some flow control mechanism to keep it very low. And we have something very similar in Galera, where we have the write set, and again, those are normally very small uh, because of flow control. In Aurora, uh, instead, what we have is a replication lag that is measured in milliseconds. So Proxy SQL is able to gather all this information and to determine which server, uh, which node is lagging slightly and this lag is measured in milliseconds, so the application can can be can uh, instruct Proxy SQL to send reads to only servers that are lagging no more than a few milliseconds, and the application can specify how much milliseconds. Furthermore, we also have introduced AZ awareness. Um, if you're familiar with Aurora, uh, you probably know that you can have uh, the various uh, the, the various Aurora nodes. Uh, spread across multiple AZ. And if you have one proxy SQL instance in one AZ, you might benefit a lot from sending traffic from that proxy to the node in the same AZ. So this means that you are avoiding cross AZ uh, the transfer, so you're saving cost. And furthermore, because the servers are on the same AZ, you also improve latency because um, it's just faster to send traffic to a node that is closed. Now, the configuration table for Aurora is quite, is slightly, and um, is, is in a way quite different than the other two, even if uh, there is some similarity. So here we have the writer host group and the reader host group. There is no notion of the backup uh, writer host group, neither the offline, because the server can either be in a writer host group or not. And if a server is temporarily gone, it's not a problem because Proxy SQL can forget about it because it means that the server has been destroyed. And if a new server shows up, Proxy SQL will be able to, to detect it again. And now we have the active uh, setting. So again, if the cluster is configured as active or not. And then we have the, the Aurora port. This is very interesting, and this is relevant to the auto discovery, because in um, in Aurora, um, all the servers start on the same port, while in MySQL this cannot be the case. Uh, but because in Aurora all the servers start on the same port, Proxy SQL need to know which port it needs to communicate, and so from one single backend node is able to bootstrap and determine all the all the servers present in the cluster and they will all be on the same port. We also have a domain name 
Um, so basically, if, um, if you're using Aurora, you have an endpoint that is also specifying your customer domain ID and then uh, AWS uh, cloud and so on. Um, but in the table, as was mentioned before, the replica host status, all this information are not there. In replica host status, you only have the host name. So for proxy SQL to build the full qualified domain name, it needs to combine the host name to the domain name. So this is why the domain name needs to be in this configuration table. Lag, then you have max lags in milliseconds. So every server that is lagging beyond, beyond a certain threshold measured in milliseconds. Proxy SQL will stop using that server. And um, if you remember before, uh, both Galera and Group Replication, they had some check interval as global variables. With Aurora instead, we have those settings that are per cluster. So you can have one cluster that has check interval every two seconds, while another cluster has check interval every five seconds. Uh, this is different from how it worked in um, Galera and group application because on those two cluster solutions, those settings are global, while instead for Aurora, they are per cluster. Then we have write the results reader, similar things to how it works for Galera and group application. Then we have the new reader weight. So uh, this is something that I haven't mentioned before, but in Proxy SQL, when you configure the various server, uh, the server has also a weight. The weight is used to determine how much percentage of the traffic need to be sent to a server if there is more than one server in the same host group. Now, because it, uh, Aurora supports auto-discovery, auto a server is automatically uh, generated when it's detected. Uh, but of course, uh, we need to define a weight for it. And in this case, the default weight is specified in, in this table. Um, then we have a few more variables that control the replication lag, how the replication lag is computed in, in Aurora. For example, um, if uh, Aurora returns that the replication lag of one server is three milliseconds, we can define that the minimum replication lag in milliseconds is 10. So even if we have a value of three, Proxy SQL will consider the minimum replication lag to be 10. Or we can have also some fine tuning, like uh, the ability of adding a certain amount of milliseconds to every read of milliseconds. The reason why we have those settings is because Proxy SQL has, uh, has some algorithm for read write split and determine to which server uh, read can be sent and trying to be confident enough that this server, even if it is lagging slightly, uh, will have the data that the client is looking for. So these are able to control all this. Okay, now next. Uh, we have a series of tables that are relevant also to Aurora and uh, the logging of the server of the server. Specifically, we have this server called MySQL Server AWS Aurora Log that um, it shows uh, the metrics collected from every of the Aurora clusters. So specifically from which host and port uh, those metrics have been collected. If there have been errors, session ID, um, last update time, replication log in milliseconds. And this table is also logging the CPU utilization of those servers. Currently, the CPU utilization is just supported. No other uh, action are being performed. But uh, we have planned to use this CPU utilization metrics to also determine which servers are more utilized than others. So we can automatically we will be able to automatically shift traffic to the least busy server and trying to balance CPU utilization in, uh, in an even way among all the servers. Then uh, we have other logging tables, uh, like for example, this one called MySQL Server, the BDS Server Check Status. Um, so it, it's basically a status table that, that shows which, what is the status of every server, so how much 
uh, when was the last time that a specific server was checked, how many checks were executed in total, and how many checks were successful or not. It also records the last error. So this is very useful if, uh, if you want to have some sort of statistics about uh, how often a backend is failing request or not. Ideally, all the checks should be okay. So the number of checks okay should match the number of check total. And if this is not the case, you will also have the last error uh, columns that is very useful to determine why um, the last check failed. Furthermore, every time a failover happens, Proxy SQL is able to detect it, and of course, because it's getting the metadata from, from Aurora itself, and it also logs in this table uh, every time it detects that a failover happens. So this allows to also go back in time and figure out uh, why you might have you might have a latency blip uh, uh, when you got page, and the reason behind this is that a failover happened. Proxy SQL detected as well, and um, application might have not noticed uh, any error because Proxy SQL might have um, prevented every any error to be ascribed to the application, but uh, the application might have noticed an increased latency because Proxy SQL was holding the request executed by the client until uh, the new until one of the instances was promoted to become the new writer node. Okay, now, uh, so far we described a series of, uh, uh, a series of HRAbility solutions for MySQL, and now let's start to identify, uh, uh, and we also described how Proxy SQL integrate with those. But uh, there are a series of challenges because uh, as I was mentioning also before, even if you're using standard MySQL application, you can have a quite complex replication topology, like uh, one master with uh, tens or even hundreds of slaves, and then those slaves might have, have more slaves on their own. And uh, well, and if you're using MySQL standard replication and you have a very a very big infrastructure, it's not unusual that you might have a high number of uh, MySQL server because not only each writer can have a variety of slaves and each slave has his own slaves, but just because you can have hundreds, if not thousands, of clusters. And uh, so, so what happened is that keeping track of all those of all those clusters can be a challenge. Uh, we have we have customers in which they have easily 1,500 um, clusters. So every cluster is composed of multiple MySQL servers. And the way Proxy SQL operates is that it can handle a very large amount of MySQL servers. So it is able to monitor them uh, constantly at regular intervals and detect failover of all those servers if anything like a failover happened. And um, uh, right now I was mentioning the example of asynchronous replication, but in reality the same apply no matter what is the replication technique that is used. So if you're using Galera, or if you're using group replication, or if you're using Aurora, technically you can have any number of clusters that are behind Proxy SQL. So you can have thousands of Galera clusters just behind one single Proxy SQL instance, and Proxy SQL will be able to handle those and hide from the application the complexity of the replication topology. And this also means that the application does not need to interact with service discovery. And um, if you still want to have service discovery, you can actually have service discovery integrated with the Proxy SQL. So it's quite also common to have um, Proxy SQL working together with um, Zookeeper or or console. Um, so basically, what I would like to describe Proxy SQL is, is is a layer, like a database is a layer in which the application does not communicate directly to the database, but uh, the database is protected or hidden, to better say, by this middle layer that that is where Proxy SQL is running. So the application will only need to know 
how to communicate with proxy SQL and proxy SQL will hide the work complexity of the network topology and any sort of failure that happens. This is completely transparent to the application and the application does not need to bother about this. So just to show the same in, in a different format, you can have a variety of application servers and a variety of clusters. Each one of those is a different type of cluster. No matter if it is asynchronous replication, group replication, Galera, or whatever else. The application does not need to know any of the details about the uh, HA solution that is deployed in every cluster. Proxy SQL is the one responsible for detecting any sort of failure. Um, so this is uh, basically the way you uh, are able to uh, use Proxy SQL as, as, as a middle layer between the application and the server. Now, to be able to handle something like this and be able to scale a lot, Proxy SQL needs also a series of very important features. And um, those features were added to, through the years. Um, like, for example, we have a, a, a very large hosting provider that has um, a quite large infrastructure and they have a lot of distinct users, multiple users. Specifically, at the time of the deployment, it was a couple of years ago, they had proxy SQL with 2 million distinct MySQL users. So this proxy SQL, when a client connects proxy SQL, proxy SQL needs to authenticate the client. It needs to perform some very fast operation and detect which server it is and extract some metadata about this, this user. So which one is the focus group, how many connection this user is able to connect. And of course, if the credential provided by the user is correct. And, uh, and also, if we have this middle layer that is able to handle a lot of applications, proxy SQL needs to scale. So it needs to be able to handle a hundred of thousands of concurrent connections. And this is normally the case. So it's quite common to have one single proxy SQL instance handling 100 or even 200 uh, application connections. And as I was mentioning before, it is also very common to have a lot of cluster behind one single proxy, so it needs to handle thousands of backend servers. And um, not only this, but um, when a client executes a query on proxy SQL, and you have, uh, as I was mentioned before, like 1,000 or more clusters, and each cluster has a reader and a writer, or maybe even more complex topology, proxy SQL needs to determine in a very fast way to which server the request from that specific client connection to be executed. And uh, the criteria for determining to which server it needs to be executed can, determine, can be determined by many factors, like the username, the, from which client um, IP this request is coming, or on which schema, if it is a select statement or a DML, uh, if it is a, on a specific table or not. So, and, and, and all this is done through uh, query rules. And so, proxy SQL needs to be able to make uh, those decisions very fast. And so, it's not very uncommon to have stuff in which we have hundreds of thousands of schema, and proxy SQL needs to determine in a very fast and efficient way uh, where to send every request when the client executes a query. And we have all the technology uh, for. Uh, implementing this. <clears throat> um, one more thing. So in this schema here, I was basically describing proxy SQL as a middle layer. I, do, I didn't want to go a lot into the details here, but uh, of course, to be able to use proxy SQL as a middle layer, uh, the application needs to make sure that um, if it connects to one proxy, this proxy itself needs to be highly available. So this middle layer does not represent one single proxy but represent a cluster of proxies. And of course, the application also needs to handle scenarios in which now its own backend, that is proxy SQL itself, fails. And I mean, this is something that can happen. And the common solution for this is to have to deploy proxy SQL in a multi-layer architecture in which uh, proxy SQL is deployed on every application server. So the application communicates to proxy SQL through uh, local through local host, 
and uh, then the proxy SQL in the application layer has all the logic to communicate with the proxy SQL middle layer. That is, we call the cluster proxy SQL layer. And of course, for the proxy SQL installed in the application server, now its own backend is the middle layer proxies. So if one of those proxies fails, the proxy in the application server should be able to transparent handle any of those failures because for proxy SQL in the application server, it is like if one of the backend, the MySQL server, this, this on backend has failed. And the same algorithm apply no matter if it is a proxy SQL server or a MySQL server. And if it fails, it will just retry the request on a different proxy. And all this should be absolutely transparent to the application. And the middle layer is the one responsible for knowing the database topology. So the proxy at the application layer has absolutely no idea about the database topology, uh, while is the cluster middle layer that is that knows about the database topology. And of course, as I was mentioning before, it's not proxy SQL the one performing the various failover. So if you if you need to perform some failover, you need some database manager, an application manager like MHA or or orchestrator. And uh, that is all I have for now. So now um, I'm going to have a quick look at the at the chat and to see if there is a question. Uh, so let me scroll. Uh, so there is a, quest, a question, What in a master-slave topology, what happens to the application byte query if there is any failover happening within the database node? So basically, I was mentioning, I was describing this. Yes, Proxy SQL is able to hold those byte queries until a new master comes. Uh, and of course, um, uh, all this is configurable. So Proxy SQL by default hold those requests for 10 seconds, but you can compute Proxy SQL to fail fast or to hold those requests for a longer period of time. So you can set this to one second. So if the server is just not there, Proxy SQL return an error to the client and say, sorry, the server, there is no server to send the query. Or instead, you can configure this variable to very, very large and Proxy SQL will be able to hold the request for an extended period of time. Okay, now. <clears throat> So if we have a lot of proxy SQL, do, do they have uh, some consensus protocol in use? The answer is yes and no. Um, they have a consensus. So there is another technology that I haven't described in uh, this presentation that is called uh, proxy SQL cluster. And uh, what this is used for is to exchange configuration between proxies. <coughs> So you can be able to configure one proxy, submit the configuration into it, and this configuration will be propagated to all the proxy. The way it works is not through push, but through pull. So every proxy is able to check the status of all the other proxy, and if they detect that one of the proxy has a newer configuration, it's pulling the configuration from it. Now, there is no strict consensus algorithm, but instead there is a um, time-based consensus. So whatever is the server that has the newest configuration is the one that is considered the source of truth. Now let me read the next question. Is there any point to use group authentication instead of there? Well, they are different technologies. And um, in a way, they, they have Similarity because they all try to provide um, AHA uh, built in uh, in MySQL basically, um, but um, yeah, they are they are even if they try to provide the same uh, the same objective that is higher ability, um, they do this in different way and they have pros and cons. 
and I think the pros and cons of one algorithm be, uh, compared to the other one is probably outside the scope of this presentation uh, because then it becomes giving pros to one or to the other one and this is probably uh, a topic for um, a, a more in-depth session between the two different technologies. Now the next question is, is query cache and proxy SQL work the same as the MySQL query cache? No, it does not. Um, the MySQL query cache uh, needs to provide data consistency and uh, the MySQL query cache is close to the data. Um, the problem with the MySQL query cache is that in order to provide strict data consistency, it easily becomes a bottleneck because every time you are performing, you are executing a DML statement that change the data in MySQL, then the query cache need to uh, need to be invalidated. And this also means it has a lot of consequences like the query cache is often become a bottleneck because there is a single mutex. Uh, Percona did some work in the past to split the query cache into multiple uh, segments. Uh, but still, the fact that the query cache has a strong consistency, this creates a bottleneck because there is a high rate of invalidation that needs to be executed in the query cache. So actually, MySQL dropped uh, query cache completely in MySQL 8. Uh, is proxy SQL query cache the same of the MySQL one? No, absolutely not. They are different, completely different technology. The query cache in uh, proxy SQL is based on TTL, on time to live. Uh, so it's more similar to how memcached works. So the result set is stored in the query cache and it will be automatically executed after a certain amount of time that you can configure that query. So you can say that uh, this specific query needs to be cached for 10 milliseconds, while another query needs to be cached for two minutes. This is completely up to you and is extremely configurable. Um, there have been some, um, some requests about uh, invalidating the query cache on the fly, uh, like when a DML is executed. Uh, there is some uh, implementation limitation in um, implementing a solution like this because in the way proxical works is that it is an agent that it is highly distributed so you can have thousands of proxy um, so if you want to implement an algorithm in which if a DML statement is executed in one of the proxy it has to invalidate all the cache in order the proxy then you have some synchronization problem and this of course will uh, will impact the performance of the query cache itself because you, you need to solve this synchronization issue. Um, from, from what I know about Ignite, you probably need to have, to, to actually use, um, if you want to have query cache to be uh, synchronized and have, have the synchronization there, um, a solution like um, Apache Ignite sounds more like the right solution for it. Okay, next question. Uh, proxy SQL with white space, it is, it is on connection based. It means if you configure proxy SQL to send select query to the reader host group, and the same reader host will be selected per connection, proxy SQL will be alternate among the reader host in the same connection. Okay, so this, to explain this question, I need to, to a bit describe how proxy SQL uh, performs is on connection pool. So when a proxy SQL executes a query on a connection, then it determines that if the connection is safe to be shared or not. And if a connection is being can be shared between multiple clients at the end of when the query is executed in the connection, the connection is brought back to the connection pool. So this means that if a client connection executes a second select statement, it is not, it is likely that it is not executed anymore on the same backend connection because that backend connection has been moved back to the connection pool and probably now that connection is being used by a different client. So there is no guarantee by default setting 
that two consecutive queries from the same client can be executed on the same backend. Now, there are ways of uh, uh, ensuring this. There are various techniques. Uh, one technique is, for instance, to artificially delay multiplexing for a set period of time. And this is, there is a variable for it. So, for example, you can say that multiplexing um, needs to be disabled for 10 milliseconds. So, if the same client executes the second select statement 10 millisec within 10 milliseconds from the end of the previous of the previous select statement, uh, then this query will be executed on the same connection. And um, we are also implementing some new algorithms in Proxy SQL in which we will be able to guarantee that uh, the server, um, always the same server will be executed. So even if you have multiple slaves that, have, that are lagging, but they are lagging of a different amount of time, uh, you will at least have consistent read because you will always use the same backend server. Now, next question. Uh, yes, proxy SQL does not invalidate cache when write just based on configuration. That's correct. And the algorithm is very, very simple. Um, you can probably cache anything that you are okay to read from a replica. So if you are okay to read data that is one second uh, stale, I'm just making an example. If you are okay to read data that is one second stale, you can probably cache that result set for one second. This is a rule of, a rule of thumb that you can implement. Is there anything specific you need to be done to insert proxy SQL in application which has a connection pool to a um, MySQL Gaia cluster? Um, no, I and mean, there is nothing specific that needs to be done to insert proxy SQL in application. Um, just a matter of configuring it. Uh, so you need to configure uh, the table that I was showing before, the MySQL Gaia host group. And, um, and then you have to enable uh, monitoring that is enabled by default. And you need to have um, to create a user that is able to perform those monitoring. The users by default is uh, has the credential of monitor and the password monitor as well. But of course, you can create a different user in uh, your product cluster and just configure proxy SQL uh, with the right uh, with the right credential to perform those checks. There is nothing nothing complicated really. Now the next question is: What is the best way to implement the high availability of proxy SQL instance itself? Are there um, and are there disadvantages of running multiple proxy SQL instances in the cluster mode where all instances are configured with the same backend host and all of them are receiving write and read in terms of managing the backend connection, etc.? So uh, there is no real disadvantage of running multiple proxy SQL instances, and actually this is our recommended way because. Uh, you can have proxy SQL as decentralized as possible. It is not un unusual to have hundreds or even 1,000 proxy SQL running in, in one cluster. And um, if you are on the in the 100 range, it is okay to have one proxy SQL instance per application server. So the application server and sorry, the application server and proxy SQL they become a single unit. So if you lose any of those two, you are using just one unit, while the rest of, of the world application keeps working. So the world infrastructure keeps working. If instead you have a lot more application server, and there is a point in which it becomes not beneficial to have that many proxy, because every proxy will have its own connection pool to the database server, and every proxy will perform its own uh, health check. And of course, you, you should avoid having hundreds of proxy, each of them running health check, because otherwise you might end up having the backend doing, spending just a lot of resources in the health check itself. So when you have a situation like this, it is not uncommon to have a middle layer proxy, and then you have the application 
that need to connect to this middle layer proxy. And of course, as I was mentioning before, um, a cluster solution like this is not uncommon, in which you will have the application and proxy SQL um, co-located in the application server, and the, the, the proxy SQL in the application server all you need to know is about the cluster proxy layer, and all the application needs to know is how to connect to its own local proxy SQL. And that's normally extremely simple because it's on one to seven zero zero one. Okay. Um, yes, and then there is a question about how to make proxy SQL itself highly available. And there is a lot of technologies behind this. And uh, I mean, this is easily another question uh, just to cover all the possible options for it. So this is a quite complex topic. Uh, so next one is just modify the virtual IP to point to proxy SQL instead of the cluster, configure proxy SQL to point to class. Yes, using the virtual IP is one of them. Um, you can also use a silos approach. Uh, but really, there are there are many, and um, the cluster one is the one we often recommend. And of course, this is not always possible. Uh, we we also have scenarios in which proxy SQL is deployed on Kubernetes. Then, in this case, what we recommend is to use the services. So, also, what is the best solution to make proxy SQL itself highly available? It also depends from where you are deploying it. Um, we know that the proxy SQL cluster features is new, but will be a feature to have the connection shared between the cluster node. Um, no, so proxy SQL features, proxy SQL cluster feature is um, is just used to exchange configuration. It's not meant to have one proxy using the con the connection of another proxy. This is not the idea. The idea is the class the the clustering features is related to the configuration. So they are basically, uh, this is what is being shared in the cluster, the configuration. And we are doing some enhancement in proxy SQL to one in which we will be able to share even more configuration between the nodes because currently what the nodes share are the list of MySQL server, the list of MySQL users, and the query rules into one we're going to exchange way more information like global variables and MySQL variables. Now, let me go to the next question. Is there any ratio on how many backend connection need per X number of frontend connection where multiplexing enabled? Um, there is no ratio. It really depends from the nature of the application. We have some uh, some application that uh, keep almost a one-to-one -one ratio, and this is very poor. Um, it, it's actually quite sad to, to see, uh, but this again, this depends on the application uh, workload itself, while there are cases in which uh, we see a ratio of uh, easily one to 1,000. So you can have 1,000 client connection, and they will all use just one backend connection. This is very depending from uh, the application and the workload itself. Now, next question. My proxy state info is stored in three layers one, internal data structure, two, memory, three, SQL, like DB. For memory, do we leverage MySQL engine in MySQL? Um, no, for in memory, what we use is SQLite itself. So SQLite can run in, um, can create different type of uh, database. So you can have, uh, and the most common is the database on file. But SQLite has also the option of having um, uh, database in memory. And this is what we use for uh, memory configuration. So when you are running VML statement on a configuration table, you are actually executing those query against an SQLite database. 
Now, next question. Let's say handling of application of application hosts that are accessing DB host via the proxy SQL. Is there a way to sniff at the client host info? It is stored into stack monitoring table. Everything is stored, and I think I cannot get granular details upon one second or so correct. Um, what exactly information you want to sniff? Uh, that's I would like to know more about this one, but um, to give some context here, Proxy SQL is collecting a lot of statistics about every traffic that is passing through Proxy SQL itself. So for every query, it is it, it removes literals and replaces them with question marks, so it, it parameterizes them, and it is able to store uh, metadata about the query itself. So it run for every query source metadata about um, its execution time, the to of course the total execution time, how many rows has been uh, sent to the client, how many rows have been affected in the MySQL server is if this is a DML statement, to which host group the query has been sent, and which user, which schema, and so on. And of course those metrics are aggregated. So if one client executes the same query five times, um, we only store it once and we have a count that says that the query has been executed five times and total execution time is the sum of those five execution times. Okay, let me go to the next question. Um, there is a monitor monitoring interval correct. What if some info is what if some info is missing between intervals? So yeah, uh, by default, Proxy SQL will consider a server not responding to a health check to be unhealthy. And uh, this has been created some false positive in the past. Uh, so we along the way we introduced uh, new global variables that determine how many timeouts uh, need to trigger the server to be considered unhealthy. The default is three. So if one server is missing three pings, Proxy SQL will consider the server unhealthy and will stop using it. If uh, in Gala cluster one node is not responding to a request three times, Proxy SQL will consider this node unhealthy and will reconfigure the cluster. Same thing for group replication. For group replication, a lot of people use router already. Proxy SQL VS router for group replication. What is the advantage? Uh, in a nutshell, router is a layer for proxy. So router does not understand anything about the MySQL protocol, nothing. Uh, I tend to call MySQL router as a proxy on steroid uh, because it does very little more than what a proxy is able to do. And of course, it, it is able to, to configure itself based on metadata present in the, in the cluster. So if one new node is added, for example, is I think it's able to detect this, but at protocol level, there's nothing more than what HA proxy does. It's just transporting PCP from one end to another one. So, for instance, router cannot perform any sort of caching, router cannot perform any sort of routing, cannot do query write, it cannot do throttling, it cannot do um, retry. So, all those features are collect statistic about the query. All those features cannot be implemented in browser just because simply does not understand the MySQL protocol. Yes, Joseph said this. Basically. And okay, I don't see any further question. Um, yeah. If somebody has any other question, either written or somebody wants to unmute themselves and having a conversation on some specific topic, uh, you're more than welcome. Otherwise, I think um, we are we reached the end for the session.